Hi class, we're continuing our lesson on 5-7. We're still doing expressions with rational exponents. So this first one here, problem number 9, is just a rule reminder from earlier parts of chapter 5. Remember, we can't have negative exponents. So the way we deal with that is if it's in the denominator, we bring it to the numerator. Or if it's in the numerator, we put it to the denominator. So right now, x raised to the negative second is in the numerator. So we'll move that to the denominator. So now it's 1 over x to the positive second. So the same is going to be true of all of our rational exponents. We can never have negative exponents, so make sure you move them appropriately, whether it be from the numerator to the denominator or the denominator to the numerator. So that leads us here into number 10. We have 16 raised to the negative 1 fourth. So I can't have negative exponents, so I'm going to make that as 1 over 16 raised to the positive 1 fourth. Now I just want to pause for a second, and the directions here it says is evaluate each expression. So notice how 10 through 14, you don't see any variables there. They're all numbers raised to an exponent. So what we're going to do here, class, is all of these are going to be simplified to a rational number, meaning a fraction or a whole number. So just so that you know, we're not going to have any radicals in our answer for these ones. They're all going to be integers or rational exponents, rational numbers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to simplify 1 over 16 raised to the 1 fourth. So let's change this into radical form to deal with it a little bit easier. So it's going to be 1 over the fourth root of 16 raised to the first power. The 1 goes to the numerator, and then the 4 is the index. So that's how we got to 1 over the fourth root of 16. So now when we look at this, 16 is a significant number. 1, it's 4 squared, but that doesn't help us out. 2, it is... 2 raised to the 4th. If you take 2 raised to the 4th in your calculator, you get the number 16. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 multiplied by itself 4 times, gives the number 16. So that means the 4th root of 16 is 2. That means the 4th root of 16 is 2. So I get 1 over the 4th root of 16, which is 2. My answer is 1 half. To maybe break this down a little bit further so it makes sense to you, I can break up 16 and make it, so I still have 1 over the 4th root. 16 right here is the same thing as 2 raised to the 4th power. When I have the square root of x squared, an x comes out, because 2 divided by 2 is just x raised to the 1st. If I have the 3rd root of x to the third, 3 divided by 3 is just 1, so an x comes out. If I have the fourth root of 2 to the fourth, these 4's just kind of cancel out because 4 divided by 4 is 1, so then the 2 just comes outside the radical and we get 1 half. So that's how we get this one. The fourth root of 16 is the same thing as the fourth root of 2 raised to the fourth, and the 4's cancel, so we just get the 2 that comes outside the radical. So our answer is 1 half. Let's get some more practice with that, because 11 and 12 kind of deal with the same thing. 343 raised to the 3 fifths. No negative exponents, so we don't have to move anything anywhere. We're now going to change this into, radic into radical form. So it's going to be the fifth root of 243 cubed. So the goal here, class, hopefully you're starting to realize that these fifth roots, fourth roots, third roots, they have something to do with our base. So when we look at 343, I wonder if it's a fifth root of something. Notice how I have the fifth root right here. So let's just see if there's a fifth root of 243. Let's open up our calculator. The fifth root is where we would go to math. And then number five here is the xth root. And so I'm going to put in number five right there first. So let's go back to our home screen. It's going to be the fifth root. And then go to math number five. The fifth root of 243. What number is that? It's the number 3. So that means 3 multiplied by itself 5 times is the number 343. We can prove that 3 raised to the fifth power is, oh sorry, not 343, 243. So getting back to our problem here, the fifth root of 243 cubed, this 243 right here is the same thing as 3 raised to the fifth power. So I'm going to write it as such. The fifth root of 243 cubed is like saying the fifth root of 3 raised to the fifth. 
that number cubed. 3 to the 5th right here is the same thing as 243. So I just changed 243 to make it look like 3 to the 5th. And then obviously this cube sign is still here. So now just in our last example, this 5th root of something raised to the 5th just cancels out, and now this 3 goes outside the radical. And then our exponent comes with it, so it's 3 cubed. So again, this 5 cancels, the 3 comes outside the radical, and it's raised to our exponent still of the third power. So what is 3 cubed? Our answer is 27. So when we take 243 and raise it to the 3 fifths power, we get the number 27. Let's practice that one more time here with problem number 12. It's similar again. Let's first talk about this negative sign. It can be kind of confusing. What's written here is different than this. We don't have parentheses on this one, so it's not a negative 32 raised to the 2 fifths. What it is, basically, is a negative 1 times 32 raised to the 2 fifths. So the positive 32 is raised to the 2 fifths, and then at the end, we're going to multiply it by a negative 1. So now let's talk about this 32 raised to the 2 fifths. If I change this into radical form, it is the fifth root of 32 squared. The fifth root of 32 squared. So now you should start thinking, I wonder if 32 is a fifth root. Let's take a look in our calculator. So the fifth root, math, go down to number 5. The fifth root of 32. Is that a number? Yes, it is. It is the number 2. So 2 multiplied by itself 5 times is the number 32. So I'm going to change this 32 right here into 2 to the 5th. So it's the 5th root of 2 raised to the 5th. And then this squared is still on the 32. So this 32, or 2 raised to the 5th, still has to be squared. All right, now we get this action going on. The 5th root of something raised to the 5th cancels out. That 5 divided by 5 is just 1. So the 2 comes outside the radical. And then the exponent comes with it. So our answer is 2 squared. But don't forget about this negative 1. It's a negative 1 times 2 squared. So it's a negative 1 multiplied by 4 because 2 squared is 4, and a negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4. So hopefully, you know, if you think about 10, 11, and 12, they were all done similar. Hopefully 10, or hopefully 11 was a little bit easier than 10, and then 12 was a little bit easier than 11. If you have any questions on those, make sure you ask me in class tomorrow. We're going to do two more problems on this video lesson. Here's problem number 13. Once again, we have a rule reminder. What happens when we have common bases and we multiply? We add their exponents, and we get x to the 7th. So we have common bases here. We have, x, we have 8 and 8 for a base. So we are just going to add their exponents. So 3 halves plus 5 halves is 8 halves. So we have 8 raised to the 8 halves. And we all know that 8 halves is the same thing as 4. So our answer is 8 raised to the 4th. We're not going to circle this because we're actually going to simplify. What is 8 raised to the 4th? I don't know. Let's put it in our calculator. 8 raised to the 4th, voila, it's 4096. 4096 is our answer for problem number 13. 4096. All right, last problem for this video lesson. Problem number 14. I lied. We're going to do 15 and 16 too. I apologize. Let's do 14, 15, and 16. So I see a negative exponent here. Whenever I see a negative exponent, what I can do, class, is I can flip the fraction, and then it's going to make this a positive exponent. So it's kind of like saying, you know, this 8 is raised to the negative 2 thirds, if you distribute it down. But then if I move that to the denominator, it makes it to the positive 2 thirds. So I'm just going to flip the fraction upside down right away. So it's going to be 27 over 8. Now that's raised to the positive 2 thirds. Okay? So that's one property of exponents is whenever you have a fraction that's raised to a negative exponent, you could turn the fraction upside down or take the reciprocal and then make the, um, the exponent positive. So now we have 27 raised to the first and 8 raised to the first. Whenever you have a power raised to a power, you multiply these. And 2 thirds times 1 is just 2 thirds. And 2 thirds times this 1 is just 2 thirds. So we end up getting 
27 raised to the 2 thirds divided by 8 raised to the 2 thirds. All right, now let's start simplifying. Let's change these into radical form. In the numerator, we get the cube root of 27 squared. And in the denominator, we get the cube root of 8 squared. Okay, so now we think to ourselves, the cubed root of 27 squared, 27 is a cubed number. We've talked about that before. It's the same thing as the cubed root of 3 cubed. 3 raised to the third power is 27. And that number is squared. In the same way here, we get 8. Is that a cubed number? Yes, it is. It's 2 times 2 times 2. So I'm still going to have the cubed root of 8, which is 2 cubed, that is raised to the second power. So now we get this canceling happening again. 3 and 3, 3 divided by 3 is just 1, so I end up getting 3 outside the radical, still squared. 3 squared. And in the same way here, this 3 and 3 cancel right here, so I get 2 squared in the denominator. 3 squared in the numerator and 2 squared in the denominator. We know what 3 squared is. 3 squared is 9. We know what 2 squared is. 2 squared is 4. So our answer here is 9 fourths. That's the correct answer for problem number 14. Okay, problem number 15 and 16. Our directions here, it says that our answers must be in radical form. So now we're throwing variables into the mix. The previous 5, 6 problems or so, we always had... Um, integers as our bases. Now we're going to have variables as our bases again. But the rules remain the same. When we have common bases, we're going to add their exponents. So 1 fifth plus 7 fifths is 8 fifths. So x raised to the 8 fifths. It tells us our answers must be in radical form. So let's change this um, exponential form, or raised to a power, into a radical form. So it's going to be the fifth root of x raised to the eighth. So whenever our exponent is bigger than our index, we can reduce. So make sure we do that. So this eight fifths, that turns into one and three fifths. This one and three fifths tells us that we can take out an x raised to the first. So I can take out an x raised to the first, and I have the fifth root of x cubed left underneath the radical. The fifth root of x cubed. There's our answer for problem number 15. x times the fifth root of x cubed. Last problem here, why don't you guys pause the video and try number 16 on your own. Alright, so let's see how you did. With common bases, we're going to add their exponents, so 2 thirds plus 6 sevenths. 2 thirds plus 6 sevenths. That's the same thing as... 14 21s plus 18 21s, which gives us 32 over 21. So when we take x to the 2 thirds times x to the 6 sevenths, we get x to the 32 over 21. We add the exponents when we have common bases when multiplying. The directions say answers must be in radical form, so let's change this rational form into radical form to say it's the 21st root of x raised to the 32nd. If our exponent is bigger than our index, we must reduce. So I have this 32 over 21. To reduce it, that's the same thing as 1 and 11 21s. So that means I could take out an x raised to the first. I can take out an x raised to the first. And I still have the 21st root of x raised to the 11th. I still have the 21st root of x raised to the, to the 11th. Remember this number in the denominator always is our index. And the number in the numerator is always our exponent. And there's our answer for problem number 16. A lot of stuff here. We'll do more practice when you get to class tomorrow.